Well, welcome back to the Undervalued Investor YouTube channel, where today we're taking a look at one of the largest, the largest bank in the United States, and probably one of the most fascinating investments during one of these most tumultuous market periods for basically the consumer when it comes to credit cards and mortgages and so many concerns that this company has continued to crush quarter over quarter with anticipation of earnings coming up uh, January 12th. This is something that you definitely want to pay attention to because they beat every quarter prior. And I just want to show you some highlights that I personally find intriguing about this stock. So consider hitting that like button because JP Morgan has primarily been a dividend payer for a lot of retirees out there. And this is a stock that from the October lows is now up a whopping 63% and is starting to retest its all time high, just like the broader market. So I'm very intrigued to see if these earnings can finally push it through that all time high and probably propel it a little bit higher because this price to earnings multiple or the company's history is actually fairly favorable for the growth we're currently getting in this environment. For this price to earnings to be around 10 and comparable throughout its history, it's usually trading somewhere between the 11 and 15 mark. And every time it's dipped below 10, it has been a huge buying opportunity pretty much since 2013. So pretty much for the last 10 years, but a lot of investors paying close attention to that dividend We've had a lot of healthy growth and something tells me the prior earnings that we're getting could lead to more dividend growth because we haven't actually got too much in the last, I'm going to say four to five years as compared to 2014 when we went from 38 cents to a dollar five. I mean, we're not talking about a tripling, but definitely well over a doubling of this dividend. But again, it's really started to stagnate for investors over the last four or five years, probably more in relation to the, you know, the tumultuous market, taking a little bit more concern on dividends. But we'll talk about the payout in a moment. As it stands, I think if we take a look at the dividend scorecard over the last five years, I mean, we're talking about an 8.55% dividend growth, which is still absolutely astounding. I mean, nothing to complain about there. And what I really want you to pay attention to here is the payout ratio, because if we actually go on to Yahoo Finance, there's a few things that I like to look at on the statistics here. First and foremost, the institutional ownership is at 72%, being one of the widely most held uh, you know, by institution stocks that exist on the S&P 500, with profit margins actually being of the highest of a lot of the banking sector at 35.9%. Uh, but what's most intriguing here is for dividend companies, as a lot of banks typically pay out much higher to get the yield that you're getting today, again, being around, um, what is it there, about 2.4, 2.5%. Again, it's nicer to buy it on the dips because you get closer to a 3% yield. But again, when you're taking a look at those dividends, man, when the payout ratio is only 24% of those earnings, I mean, there is so much room for stability and guarantees within this dividend, even if we head into somewhat of a rocky market with mortgages or credit cards. But speaking on that, when we take a look at their actual earnings, there has been a declining uh, in you know revenue growth when it comes uh, to a lot of these aspects when it comes to credit cards. When it comes to mortgages, though, we're still seeing some growth. It's not like it was before because home lending has slowed down uh, quite dramatically. But the thing is, the loans they currently have outstanding, they have actually been seeing an increase in payments, right? Which has led to a lot of this revenue growth. In higher interest rates actually benefit banks to some extent. As we can see, revenue of $17 billion, which was up 19% year over year primarily driven by higher interest income, right? So if you have to raise interest rates, they tend to make a higher percentage on those payments. So that's something that's definitely benefiting them and is likely to continue benefiting them into this next earnings period. But I'll pass that question off to you. I'd love to know what you guys think about JP Morgan uh, and the broader banking sector in that comment section below.